Okay, uh, this is the next training tape in our session for the 2021 season. Uh, again, these are these are plays taken from last year's uh, playoff games, and uh, some of them you'll see is redundancies, but uh, they're all good plays for us to learn from. This the topic of this tape is uh, I'm going to call mechanics and unusual plays. So we're going to go through some pylon plays, some um, crossfield mechanics, forward, backwards passes, and plays that sometimes as officials that we just hope that we're not involved in, but we learn from those who are involved. So this first play we're going to look at it's a we're going to look at the the pylon play here. So as we're going to let this run, first we're going to take a look at the block by number five right here, right? It's he he's a he's going inside. We're thinking, do we have a blindside block here? There's a little bit of a hit there, but there, it's not really forcible there. So we're good with a pass on that block by number five. But take a look at the next block coming around the corner, and let's see if I can get to it. This block by uh, I can't. I don't know the number right here, but you see how the defender can see the block, and the block is in the chest. So that's another case where there is not a foul for an illegal blindside block there. But now we're going to get for the reason for this play. So look what we have here. We have an official, a deep wing. I don't know if it's the field judge or side judge in superb positioning, and this is where we need communication because as we'll see right about there, he steps out of the runner. Looks like he steps out of bounds. Okay, which is this official's looking right down the line at that, and I'm sure he got it good. But what also happens is if that official, if that player number 16 doesn't step out of bounds, since the ball touched the pylon, or did he touch the pylon in possession, we have to know the result of the play here. So, and then here's another one of my pet peeves as officials, watching officials uh, in high school mainly. This official here looks like he's too worried about the ball. Just stand there and officiate the play. And uh, they can't play without the ball here. But look what happens here. It appears that deep wing sees him step out and points to his wing official who's coming down and killing the clock. This is a great job with mechanically speaking. Coming down, kill the clock. Deep wing, just turn and just watch that action. Don't worry about the ball right there. But let, let's take this one step further. Let's say the runner doesn't step out of bounds here. And he goes forward and reaches right here. It appears in this angle, and you know, it's that the ball is loose whenever the ball touches the goal line. So by rule here, we would have a touchback. We'd have a fumble. It hits the pylon. The pylon makes it out of bounds. So then a fumble forward through the end zone by the offense, we know is a touchback. All right, to this next play, we're going to talk a little bit about a forward progress. And forward progress was taught to me as where the runner's voluntary movement stops. And it's voluntary, right? It's, so right about there, we have, a, we have the runner's forward progress stop. And then what ends up happening as a wing, the ball gets ripped out, right? Oh, boy. But the crew does a good job right here in saying that forward progress is stopped. However, we didn't do a wonderful job at selling this call, okay? If this is this is me, and th I mean, look, the defense thinks they have a turnover here, but, you know, the officials, like I said, ruled it correctly by saying forward progress to stop. If this is me on the wing at the bottom of the screen, I'm coming on and blowing my whistle hard and saying, and yelling to my referee, the ruling on the field is that the runner's forward progress was stopped in the field of play. It's very easy for the referee to click on his mic and say, say exactly that because you can see the coach at the bottom of the screen is getting a little agitated because he thinks that we don't know what we're going to rule so if we come in and sell this play and run in with our hand up it just makes it look a little bit better it makes it no like to the whole crowd that we've gotten this solved so let's just watch this play one other time and i'll and i'll talk you through it again so we have a handoff forward progress to stop then we have the ball ripped out, okay? And there's nothing wrong with coming in late and saying that because, you know, there are times we're not sure that the runner is going to break free or not, but uh, selling the call a lot of times is is half is half the battle. So this is a play which is quite interesting, and, and it's kind of a crew call play in a way because, I mean, and this crew right here did a superb job again. We have a tip by, tip by B. 
So when we have a tip by B, there are a few things we keep in mind. All DPI is off limits. The uh, if, a, if there's early contact not playing the ball or anything early contact through the back, uh, th there is no foul for defensive pass interference because the ball was tipped. Number two, where was the ball tipped? Beyond or behind the, the line of scrimmage? That matters for it was tipped here behind the line of scrimmage. We need to know that for ineligibles downfield or possible offensive pass interference. Well, in this case, what else do we need to know it for? Oh, number 52 catches the ball. So is that legal for a, lot, an, a person with an ineligible number to catch this pass? Well, in this case it is because number seven of the defense touches the ball, making everyone eligible. And what the crew does excellent here is they let it play out. I'm sure they were a little confused, but if you have a situation where this happens and you see 70 or 52 in this matter catches the ball, and, and let's just say somebody throws a flag and reports the foul to you, referee, and says, I have a foul for in, illegal touching by an ineligible receiver. That might not be, or it might be a legal participation. I'm not exactly sure of what the rule is, but, um, or I won't say the, what the rule is, but I don't know the exact statement of the rule here. Then you can have another crew member come in and say, you know what, I had it touched by the defense, so that, that, uh, that touch by that lineman is legal. So this, this could be another case where we have to have a crew play, a crew call together to get this play correctly adjudicated. And this is exactly what this crew did here. Uh, wonderful job here. All right, next play, we're going to talk about ball exchanges. And this, this play happens at the end of the half. Okay, so let's, let's just set the stage. We're at the end of the half. We got to get to the uh, 27 yard line for a first down. And when time is at the essence, we, it's even more important for us to know when the first ball down is. We should be talking from two minutes under that we're going to use one ball. So if the ball is tack, if the runner is tackled in bounds and the ball, you know, you got to get the ball to the umpire so he or she can get in and set the ball as quickly as as you can so that the, uh, the offense can snap the ball. So let's look at this situation. We have a runner looks like he is down in bounds. Looks like his knee is down. I, I can tell you it was because I was at the game uh, live. He, he hits down inbounds and rolls out of bounds backwards. So he comes back down on his own, and he looks like from this angle, he is short of the line of the game. So we should come up with the ball and not set it down. Okay. Outside of two minutes, this is the great. This is the exact mechanic we want to do, but we don't want to set the ball down here. You can already see the umpires working out. So uh, headlines when our line judge should be throwing the ball in to the umpire so that the umpire can then turn around, take the soft spot from the headlinesman who's at the top of the screen, giving a soft spot to the line judge at the bottom of the screen. The umpire turns around, sees where the, the headlinesman's lining up, puts the ball down, gets back into his position, and we're ready for the next play. Uh, the other critique I have of this play is of the deep wing coming up. Deep wing you're not really being of any benefit to your crew here by coming up here. Stay back. Okay, you're not going to come in and get the ball because if you come in and get the ball and relay it in, then you're going to have to turn around and run back to this uh, to your position. So in this situation, all we would want to happen, and we'll play the game again, we'll play the play again. We would want, if we have a play like this where it ends in bounds, the line judge comes up, takes the ball, throws it right into the umpire who's uh, ready to go, and up, oh, looks what happens. We throw the ball over the umpire's head. Okay, these are situations that, you know, when if this is if that play were to happen and then if there were to be like 10 seconds left on the clock and we throw the ball over the umpire's head, we have to have enough guts, and I'm sorry I can't stop the play, we have to have enough guts if it's more than 10 seconds remaining in the half of the game, and the ball goes over the umpire's head and it's rolling. We have to have enough guts as official to kill the game clock. And I'll tell you this, it's not going to be a very pretty scene for the, the team on offense, or I'm sorry, the team on defense who's mad at you, but we cannot allow that to happen because the offense should get the opportunity to snap the ball one more time. And what I'm saying is you umpire goes and picks up the ball, and maybe you even start the clock before the umpire puts it down, 
but we can't let the game end or the half end in a situation like this. This next play is a tough one. Is the runner down? Is there a fumble? Is there a possession? So we have a snap. The ball's rolling on the ground. Do we really ever have possession? I don't know the answer to this question, but what I do like is this referee and this umpire and this headlinesman is firm. They're both coming in saying they have possession of the ball and the runner's knees down. And you can you can see that situation right there, right? I mean, hands around the side of the ball right there, and the knee is down. Right there. So this is a great job. And, you know, like I said in the earlier play, we sell these calls. We sell these calls like this. It's like, hey, we got this one right. No, no questions asked. Nobody ever had an issue with it. So this is a great job done by this crew on this play. Knowing the line to gain. This is a play where, you know, where I, I preach a lot to the line of scrimmage officials. Know the line to gain. If you're going 10 yards, you know you're going to put that line to gain right in your head. Okay. So here's a situation where we have a pass thrown. Runner gets the first down. What I love here is even though the runner was tackled inbounds, this line of scrimmage official knew the line to gain. Knew that it was going to be a first down, calmly came in and killed the clock without even having to look across. This next play, we're going to talk about cross field mechanics. I, I alluded to it a little bit earlier, but this play illustrates it <clears throat> excuse me, even better. So we're going to have a pass to the uh, bottom of the screen. And look where the, uh, so in this situation, this is the headlinesman. Look how difficult it is for the headlinesman to look in here and see where the tackle was made. So let's look where the tackle was made. The tackle is made about the 43-yard uh, line, if I'm not mistaken. And the first down looks to be about at the 42-yard line. Or, uh, yeah, it's, cl it's close either way. But look what happens here. You have a headlinesman coming down looking, so obviously he or she does not know where the line to gain is. What should be happening here is the line judge should be working down to get this spot coming in wherever the, the spot should be. Let me draw it correctly. Whether it's the coming in and the headlinesman should be coming down and looking across the field and then lining himself up with his partner across the way. Because look, look what happens here. Uh, do I have a first down? Uh, I don't know. Um, it's close. We just look very unsure of ourselves in this situation. So if we had a situation where it looks like the runner is short by about a half a yard, where the line judge comes in, squares his, himself in, and then the headlinesman looks across the field, it just looks a lot sharper. And... Uh, and helps our, our ourself there. Forward backwards passes. They're, they're our nightmare because we don't have instant replay like those above us who get themselves bailed out by it a lot. So here we have a situation. We're throwing. He, the, the quarterback throws from the uh, 40 and a half yard line. The ball is first touched. Looks like the 42 yard line. So in this situation, the, head, the line judge should be punching backwards. Okay. Uh, when, I, when I work line judge and I have a situation like this, not only do I punch backwards, but I also walk into the offensive backfield because for the headlinesmen to be able to see me, they're going to have to look through all this mesh to be able to see me. So I try to make myself more visible to that person who's working across. From me. Unfortunately, in this situation, what we do here is we have this situation here. The line judge doesn't make any rolling really, and then the headlinesman comes in and singles incomplete where in fact this this looks to be a backwards pass it's first touched about it's let go about the 41 it's first touched around the 42 um, I know we don't cheap turnovers but you know in these situations in, in in big time games we have to give we have to referee these games as if uh, every play means something so, uh, you know, our mechanics could have been a little better in that situation right there. So another situation with a forward-backwards pass, and I'll, I'll admit this one's extremely difficult. 
So we have a forward handling of the ball, which is fine. Next, we have, looks like we're going to have a double reverse. So do we have a fumble? Or do we have a forward pass? Or what? So let me play it real time here. So obviously in this case, the crew ruled that it was a fumble. But let's, let's just take this a little bit further. And I mean, this is, like I said, this is an extremely difficult play. You cannot tell if number 24 comes down on the arm and knocks the ball out. Or does the offensive player try to flick the ball forward? If the offensive player flips the ball forward, do we know if that's allowed? The forward handling is allowed behind. Is this Does the forward handling make this a second forward pass? If this is the forward pass and the ball falls to the ground, then we actually have an incomplete pass. So this is a good play to go through. And um, listen, there's no angle that's going to tell us what exactly it is. I will go with the officials on the field. It does look like number 24 knocks the ball out of the runner's hand. So we have a fumble here. But, uh, you know, it's it's something good to talk about because it's, it's a play that we hope actually doesn't happen with us. Okay, next play we're going to look at. Uh, our goal line mechanics and look look right here. So we're, we're snapping the ball looks like from the five yard line Our deep wing we should have back in the corner a little bit further our back judge. This is seven man Works we work in the play in the state playoffs your back should be up against the uh, the backstop there on the uh, Goal post But watch what happens here. I know we're not we don't have to immediately go to the goal line but here's a play where we get lucky, right? We have our line judge who's standing at the six at the five yard line. Um, how are we going to rule on a play on the goal line here? We have to be able and and we have to understand that, you know, we may be able to, to stop for a second and read the play, but at some point we have to make our way to the goal line here on these situations. Second thing I want to note is watch the deep wing here. Um, as I said, I'd like to see them a little bit deeper, maybe at the point of the dotted lines. But here we have a lot of wasted movement. Watch them walk forward. Is there really any reason that we should be moving in a situation? Because look, what if the ball's thrown to the back corner of that pylon? You just walked yourself up in an area that's going to cause you problems. So just, just stay still and officiate the play. Here we have another pylon play, and look at this. Look at this positioning by this. I think it's the deep wing here. Yeah, it is the deep wing. Just wonderful position. Look how far back he is. He's back beyond the dotted line. And what makes this even better? The pylon's threatened, and this official never has to move once. Never has to move their eyes. Hits the goes up nice signal this is just a wonderful wonderfully officiated play mechanically speaking let's watch it again calm got the ball goes up great job here great positioning all throughout this down this next play we're going to talk about a little bit about punt mechanics so here we have a ball rolling on the ground deep wings you should be back further. I'd like to see the deep wing on the 30 yard line. And as you'll see, the other deep wing is in good position, but just stay back. And look what's happening here. The play is still going on and we're worried about the ball. What's going on in here? What's going on upfield? Especially in a situation like this where the clock stops after the play. Don't worry about the ball, okay? This play still really isn't over, and we're worried about the ball for the next play. This play I, I bring up only to watch Watch what happens with the chain crew here. So we have a pass to the other side of the field. What I like here is the line of scrimmage official gets deep into the backfield a couple steps to look upfield. See this person waving on? 
we talk to the chain crew before the game, and you know we, we try to make them a part of the crew because you know their success our their success is part of our success. But never do not allow them to screw up your game. Okay, I don't know if this this gentleman is signaling like, hey, we're going to move, but we shouldn't allow them. We're the ones as headlinesmen or line judges that move the sticks. The stick people a lot of times are old ex officials. You know, and they, they know the rules or they know the mechanics, but, but headlinesmen, whenever the sticks move and they shouldn't, the responsibility falls on you. So just remind them throughout the game or throughout the game or even in your pregame that please stay still until I tell you to move. Okay? Next play, we're going to talk, you know, I, I've mentioned this a few other times here, but watch what happens here. The ball's rolling on the ground. And this official's worried about the ball getting the ball from the ball boy. Whenever, look what happens with number two and number four. We have a situation here. Hit. What if number two decides to drive him in the ground? Well, we have no idea if that happens because we're worried about looking upfield to get a ball. Okay. But let the ball lay there. When you stop officiating, when the players stop moving, and they go back towards their own. Catch, no catch. This is another wonderfully officiated play by this crew. And it ends up being an interception. So we have a long pass. And we can see it better. I'll say this right now. This is not joint possession. Okay? Joint possession is when they catch the ball airborne and they both come down to the ground at the exact same time. That is joint possession. Here... We do a great job. We let it play out. We let them both go to the ground because that's what has to happen to have possession. You have to, if you're going to the ground, you have to keep maintain possession throughout your throughout the ground here. So what happens here is the offense does not maintain possession. The defense comes out with the ball, and we reward an interception here, which is the right and correct call here. We'll see it on the other other view a little bit better. So we have a pass down the side, down the middle of the field. Two guys get it. They both go down. And guess who comes up with it? The defense. And we correctly rule the defense with the ball. Okay. Do not. Joint possession happens once in a blue moon. And probably even more rare than that. As the crew did in this situation, if they went to the ball, ground and they both had the ball and they, they were on the, the ground with the ball both tight, that's when you rule joint possession. In a situation like this, you let them fight it out, and the stronger person comes up with it. And here, and in this case, it was the defense. Another forward backwards pass. Here we have a situation. Do we have a backwards pitch? Does this line judge know if it's a backwards pitch? Tough play. Looks like it's backwards. They do a good job and they let the, the play go. But mechanically speaking, whenever that touch happens right there, whenever it hits the ground, I should see a fist pointing backwards by this line judge to let everyone know that I have a backwards pass. But what I do like, the line judge comes in calmly with his hand up, singling the next down. Next, we have another forward progress play, which I think we probably could have handled a little bit better. So we have a backwards pitch again, and then the, the runners meet, met and driven backwards and out of bounds. And look what happens. Uh, you can see it a little faintly. The headlinesman kills the clock. So let's let's run through this play again. There we have a pitch. When that pitch happens, and you see it here, line of scrimmage official, you need to get into the backfield, in this case, probably close to 5 to 10 yards. So that, for A, for your safety, so you can go to work the next day, and B, to be able to see upfield and officiate the play. Because I think we panicked a little bit here, and then whenever the, the runner got pushed backwards, and he got pushed backwards out of bounds, but his forward progress was stopped in the field to play. 
So mechanically speaking, if you, if you even find yourself into this position and, and the runner is driven backwards, headlines with a line judge spin and face the sideline and wind the clock. And the person that will help you with the spot of forward progress is your partner across the field. So stand there, wind, officiate the play, watch the player, get the ball from the player after they all stop moving, turn around and throw to your umpire and you say, you, um, take the spot from my partner across the field. Next, this is a numbering situation and, and I'm not really going to show the play, but you can see how, look, look how everyone is spread out here. We have, um, looks like two linemen here. A quarterback, a running back, a wide receiver here, wide receiver here. It's not fourth down, it's first down. So we got to make sure that we have the numbering, that we don't have a numbering exception. For umpires, you got to make sure that you have five, 50 through 79 on a play like this. Whenever you see only two guys come out, you got to look left, you got to look right, up the middle. Do I got my five, 50 through 79? Don't just, don't just fall asleep on plays like this. Because we got two here, 50, 74, and another one. Well, it looks like we have three there. So do we have two more out spread out wide? Catch no catch on this situation. Let's go a little bit further. So we have a pass, catch, hit, ball comes out, right? Bang, bang, right? Pass. Catch, hit, ball comes down. No possession on the play. Um, it looks like the there's a little bit of maybe confusion here. What ended up happening is the crew called this an incomplete pass, which is what exactly we want to happen because we don't want cheap turnovers. There's no, there's a catch. Yeah, the runner does turn his shoulders upfield, but we don't want to split hairs like this. If we call this incomplete, because the ball's laying on the ground, no one's going to say anything. And, you know, we don't live in the world of instant replay. It's it's okay to have this situation called incomplete. It appears that the head linesman thought it was complete because uh, he, he doesn't signal. But the crew, somebody on the crew saves the crew and comes in and says, you know what, we have an incomplete pass. And this is, <clears throat> excuse me, ends up being very good crew officiating on a play like this. All right, kickoff, and um, this is, I put this play only on here because you always have to be aware, okay? What happens, and you'll see it faintly on the end zone view, and you can see it a little bit here, but the, this person waves for a fair catch, and the referee was alert enough to see it and comes in and spots the ball. Any waving action above the head is a fair catch. Watch this player right here. It's very faint, but you can see the arm go up. Right there. Referee sees it, catch, comes in, and kills the clock. However, what you see over here, if you wind back a little bit further, you have one of the line of scrimmage officials winding the clock. So in this situation, we have to make sure we keep the clock right, and this is why you write down the score and time on the card. So if if you're the referee or anybody who say, sees a fair catch in a situation on a kickoff, after you uh, put the ball down, you need to look at your card and make sure that the time on the on the screen matches the time on your card because, as we know, on a fair catch, no time should come off the clock because... Uh, once the ball is possessed, it is dead. Um, this this is the last play. This is a kind of an interesting play. So we have a double pass here, backwards pass. So we should have a punch back right here by the uh, line judge at the bottom of the screen. So now we have a pass downfield. Ooh, is that early contact? Not playing the ball. But let's rewind back a little further. Do we have an illegal shift? Look at the motion person. 
We have a tackle going down just as this person's going in motion. Is it the biggest call in the day? It's not, but it's something we should, should be aware of. And if we don't call it, we should immediately talk to the coach after the play. So we have a double pass, pass, and then qualify the defender. We talked about this on another on the, on the passing game. The defender is not playing the ball. But do we have early contact? We do not have early contact. This is a situation where you can't always get in your head whenever the defender's not playing the ball that it's always a foul. And as we know from rule changes a few years ago, face guarding without contact is no longer a foul either. So this is a great play by the defender here to, not, to uh, time the, the, time the uh, breakup perfect. Good job by the crew for recognizing that it was a backwards pass and allowing this double pass. So uh, that's the last play on this tape on this mechanics and uh, kind of a little bit unusual plays. Um, I appreciate everyone who's been watching these videos and sharing them with uh, other people. I can see my subscriptions going up. And uh, my goal here is just to help somebody get better on a Friday night or Saturday or whenever your high school game is because uh, that's, what, that's what we do as officials. We work together and uh, we help each other out. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I appreciate your time.